Hi everyone, my name is Mia Hamili. Uh, my topic today is Products of Empathy. I completed the Human Centered Design course thread here at UC Berkeley. And the reason why I actually chose this title is because so many times too often I see that technology has been developed but not necessarily considering the social science aspect of it. And so I wanted to delve into that today for you. All right, human centered design. I actually am an interdisciplinary studies major here at Berkeley, and I recently graduated in May. And the reason I actually got into the human centered design course thread is because I was a web programmer slash development kind of person in the past. And for me, I really wanted to enhance my technical skills and also kind of get that humanist perspective when it comes to developing interfaces for different projects. And one funny thing I actually can kind of point out whenever I talk about human-centered design is that whenever people are asking me, okay, what are you studying here in Berkeley aside from ISF? Uh, when I say human-centered design, I always get this funny look on their faces because I think it's a little bit too advanced of a concept for this age. Uh, I think whenever I say human-centered design, they think about, oh, it's just another hippie thing she's learning at Berkeley. <laughs> but really, so I kind of like, unfortunately, have to simplify it for them and say, oh, it's human-computer interaction. But I think for me, human-centered design is really more of desi a design process where the person who's actually going to use that certain product is considered greatly as a consumer and as a user. And I actually chose this picture today. Oh, before I start, this picture is actually from a very significantly accessible and highly legitimate source that a lot of scholars and acclaimed presenters use today, and that is Google Images. Uh, <laughs> and it really is representing the cycle of technology and how it's really evolved throughout the years. The three courses I took during this course thread is Introduction to Cognitive Science, or also known as Cognitive Science C1 or Education C1, taught by Jennifer Hewden. Next course I took was Introduction to Technology, Society, and Culture, taught by Professor Gary Wren. And the last course thread I took, which is more practical, was the HCI Design Clinic taught by Bjorn Hartman. All right, let's start off with cognitive science. So I actually got into this course um, wanting to learn more about psychology and its intersection with computer science, artificial intelligence, linguistics. And for me, this class is really eye-opening in the fact that not only did I learn more about the human brain and its processes, but also kind of how it parallels to certain machine operations today and also how we distinguish ourselves from, mach from machines. Uh, right here, I actually have the human brain and the Turing machine. The Turing machine, for those who don't know, is actually a machine invented by Alan Turing around the 1960s, and it was kind of like the first uh, computer that was invented. And for this one, he was basically arguing that the Turing machine can create all these different um, results in accordance to whatever operations that was put into the machine. And for me, during this class, we actually had discussions in aside from the courses that we took with the professor. And she was actually talking about perception, memory, consciousness, and of course, occasional metaphysics at the end. And this is when I actually started thinking about how, how we as humans can really use this kind of like, these brain processes and integrate them into the machines that we make and also kind of, what do you call that? Um, design the machines to, I don't know, expand in their knowledge and also their capabilities. And from there, I started thinking about taking another course in theory, which is more introduction to technology, society, and culture. For this one, it was really, more of a historical jump for me, uh, literally and metaphorically, because I wanted to see how technology, for us as humans, we started out as a hunter-gatherer society, developing just tools. And from then on, we got into the industrial revolutions, as you know. We got the automobile, the planes, and then we moved on to the communications revolution, and also the digital age that we have now. And for this particular course, I don't know, it was kind of, mind-boggling for me how we as humans can actually develop these tools as the years go. How does someone actually have the idea of creating a product that's never been seen before 
and actually have some use for it. And so this picture that I have here right here, the flowy technology image, really showed me how much technology has changed throughout the years and has expanded and is cons and consistently evolving. Another thing too I wanted to point out during this presentation was that the chart here that I have, the number of internet users by country, the fact that the digital age has really grown so much kind of shows how much digital literacy now is an important skill to have, especially in the developing world. And I think Millennium Development Goals actually includes this now. And for this particular course too, I learned how much technology, as I said before, has really had all these consequences upon human society and also repercussions. And so what I had was um, a bunch of logos signifying how much technology has transformed economic opportunities, has transformed the way we offer our services, and of course, um, how we perceive efficiency in our society. And then, so speaking about technology and how it can actually be this force of change, I wanted to try and implement what I had learned in the classroom. So putting theory to practice, I actually started learning more about how to use this knowledge into practical applications by learning about the Citrus Center here at Berkeley that was just opened. It's really great, just a plug, um, if we do find corporate investors out there watching the Human Center Design course threads and really looking to invest their money into something worthwhile, um, research for information technology, looking to find solutions for the most pressing issues in society today is really something that they should look into. And so from Citrus, I got to know a component of it called the Berkeley Institute of Design, which is a research group right now on user interface design at Berkeley. And that's what I really liked about this particular group was that just like me, it kind of wanted to combine multiple disciplines that range from art, computer science, mechanical engineering, and maybe even some social science in there too. And here at the picture, on the upper right, we can see that there are Indian students using cell phones. And as much as we would like to believe, they are not texting each other about how they have this mutual feeling that Dobby should not have died in the Harry Potter movie. But rather, it is actually um, a display of one of the projects that the Bid Lab is actually working on right now. The project that I actually got to had the opportunity to learn more about was called Millie, and that was through the, um, the guidance of Professor John Kenny, a current professor right now in the Department of Computer, of Computer Science. And Professor Kenny really invited me to kind of like sit in and learn more about how they developed this mobile application for the developing world, where a lot of children, um, they started off in India, wanted to learn the English language more efficiently and really in a space where it was more interesting for them to learn from. And MILI, it stands for Mobile and Immersive Learning for Literacy in Emerging Economies. And there we actually kind of created this guitar hero game that taught these kids how to speak English well. When I got into the project, um, it was really more towards not even just the developing world alone, but also the people here in the United States were also struggling with their English skills. And so right then, and, right then on, we talked about how we could use this service for immigrants right now who are still learning English as a second language. All right, so oh, what do you call it? The Millie Project was not enough for me. I really wanted to get into it and maybe even create my own mobile application and wanted to learn more about that. And so I signed up for um, Hartman's uh, Computer Science 298 class, which is on Human Computer Interaction Des Design Clinic, and specifically on user interface prototyping. And so prototyping really is just kind of creating the first few stages of your product and really designing so that you can create it. Um, like an actual, I guess, product from it. Sorry. Uh, it was more on low fidelity. What it basically means is that you had to 
create your product on paper or maybe even make it on a PowerPoint presentation or video. And for me, that, that experience is really something that I kind of already practiced before in my, I guess, teenage years when I was still web programming. But I think taking this class really empowered me, in a sense, to know how to make more professional mobile applications. And so for this one, we're creating a project uh, for a smartphone. How the class usually works is that we learn one method per week. And I'll, of course, every week, too, we also had our classmates and the grad students critique our work. And this class is really, I don't know, inclusive in terms of whatever discipline or whatever study the person may have come from, they were really welcome into the class. And I think what the professor and the grad students really emphasized during this course was that no matter where you came from, you had something to contribute to the product design. And so here, my project with my partner was called the Awesome Fish Project. It was a sensitive name. And we were actually kind of creating this product from our personal experience being touched by the California Academy of Sciences exhibit on coral reefs. And that was um, an exhibit displaying how coral reefs may be at the brink of extinction if we do not preserve our oceans now. And so here you have the different, we're actually working right here at the iSchool, the information school here in Berkeley. And you can just see in the pictures how, I don't know, time consuming it took, how many details I can actually go through, how many times you have to revise a product just to get it to its um, perfect form that you want it. And even then, even when it's at its perfect form that you think um, is your final way of presenting it, there's still other ways to, of course, develop it. So here I am creating all the designs. Okay, so the lessons learned I got from this course, right, was first one is your personal experiences matter. And this isn't just for really, um, in terms of like putting your personal experiences onto the product. It's really just more um, as, you, as builders of tomorrow's technologies, we have to consider people's stories. We have to consider the human perspective when we're developing something. Of course, to not only just to like think of the person as someone who's gonna buy a product and to make profit from them, but really just more to see that that person can actually assign value to this particular thing. And you have to know how far that thing can go and how much more you can actually make it go in the right direction. Second lesson learned is that it is never too late to start over and make something better. So as I've ex exemplified before with my previous slide, uh, actually had the Awesome Fish project kind of go through several stages of kind of iteration and also kind of development. Uh, for this one, anyone who actually is interested in creating their own technological device or even like mobile application just has to know that almost anything in this world really can be developed more efficiently, more user friendly, and there is no limit to it. I remember just getting in class every day and just being astounded by the different ideas that my classmates had to offer me. They'd always think of something um, to do something a little bit faster, a little bit more interesting. And I think that's what, I, that's what I'm also very thankful for, this opportunity to have the Human Centered Design course thread, is because I got to meet all these people who had so many innovative solutions to certain things. And I'm not sure I could not I'm not sure if I could have found a space like that anywhere else. And that's about it. Thank you. <laughs> anyone have any questions? So if anyone has any questions, please. Hi, so I have a question. Yes. I really like your idea and your title, uh, the concept of empathy. Yes. And design technology. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, so designers kind of work in, not in isolation maybe with each other and in dialogue with each other, what's 
Right, of course. Well, we can definitely have multiple methods of gaining this information. We could do surveys, interviews. I think really even just like sitting in a classroom or in an environment where you know that particular technology is going to be used is helpful. Just really seeing how the user interacts with it and of course considering what the user could be trying to identify whatever they're familiar with when they're using your technology is certainly beneficial.